Barra, ladies and gents. This is Andrew with Creative Crush, and today I'm going to run you through a little story. Hey so perhaps you're familiar with the idea of a space opera. A space opera is a science fiction fantasy epic, much like Star Wars or Frank Herbert's Dune. But I was thinking how it would be interesting to have an actual space opera. Or in other words, a science fiction opera. So I came up with a story for one. The songs would be sung in Latin, the music would be composed to a very, you know, classical, romantic feeling. So either a romance era or a classical era, even neoclassical, somewhere in there, you know, a little more of the of that feeling. I would need a librettist, of course. I am uh, not much of a musician myself. But the basic story of my space opera is, say, a few thousand years from now, even a few million years perhaps, humanity has spread far and wide across the galaxy, colonizing worlds and making incredible technology. But time has come. Genetic diversity no longer exists amongst the species, and we are just dying. We cannot reproduce anymore. We've reached the natural extent, and we are coming to our time of extinction. Not from war or poverty or, or violence, but or disease even. It's just a uh, just our, our genome has has grown too old and has failed. Now during this process, uh, with humanity growing old as a species and, uh, and and dying, humanity had also at one point created a species of robots. And these robots, their purpose was to protect and maintain things made by humanity including humanity, and to keep them operating perfectly. However, since humans are now passing on, you know, how humans are going extinct, the computers, the uh, the robots, if you will, they're, uh, they're confused, and they see humans now as a mistake, because if we were perfect like they believed us to be, then how could we be dying naturally? So now they're trying to clean us, try and get us out of the way, because they see us as a problem. Basically, it's a glitch in the robo-system. We pick up with one of the last human cities, and uh, the cities are contained in giant crystal globes that float in space. And these these are like starships, trying to like run away from from the machines that would destroy us. And there's a crew that operates this starship. They're on the end of the glass globe. There's a globe and then the ship. Inside the starship section is a scientist, and she is working diligently to solve the issue with the human genome so that we can continue as a species. Nobody knows what she's working on. She's working on it in secret, but she won't reveal it. This scientist's husband is the captain of the ship, and his job is to keep everyone safe and alive. While they're uh, hiding out in this section of the galaxy, waiting for the scientist to finish her developments, they're discovered by a fleet of the robots, and the robots attack, and before they can escape, the crystal globe is cracked, so now the city is leaking out through the crystal globe. And the captain has to make a decision. Do I flee now, or do I stay behind and try and fight? Now he knows if he stays behind and fights that they will all die. If he flees now, and goes through their, uh, their hyperspace travel, it'll finish destroying the globe and kill everyone inside the city, but the crew of the starship will survive. So he makes the hard choice. He has to save as many lives as he can, and unfortunately, there's no way that he can save the city, so he has to leave. So that happens, they leave, the city's destroyed, and now there's just the six of them left, the crew of six. But the captain is confident that his wife, the scientist, can solve the problem and rejuvenate the species, that they can start again. At this point in the opera, we'll be following the scientist in her lab, and she'll be working on a new kind of robot, and she'll begin to sing her solo, which is based on the tune Ave Maria, but it will be Ave Machina. So they're going on now, they're trying to survive, the captain's making the hard decisions, and uh, we find out that the assistant is in contact with the robots, the bad robots. And he make, they make a deal that if he turns over the ship and they kill the captain, that he gets the scientist for himself and that he can have her. So the machines find them and now a big battle is raging on the ship. The leader of the bad robots is named Michelangelo, and he is a tall, angelic-looking robot. But instead of having a head, it's just smooth. And he holds a staff that is a spine with his head on top of it. He sees himself as the perfect organism. 
He believes that he is what should replace humanity and those like him. So the crew is being killed as they're trying to protect the scientist because they are firm in their belief that she can save the species. Uh, the battle rages, many of the crew are killed, it's just down to the last three of them, the assistant, the scientist, and the captain. And the assistant begins telling the, the scientist that he loves her and that he's done this, and she tells him that she will never love him. So in a fit of rage, the assistant kills the scientist, and then the captain kills the assistant. And now it's just the captain left, and the robots are at the door. But uh, he's able to, the captain is able to speak with his wife in her last dying words, and she tells him that she's finished, that the process is complete for saving the species. So when the robots burst in, and Michelangelo is there to kill him, he surrenders and allows it to occur, and they kill him. But now, another character shows up. It's, a ro and it's another robot. It's the one that she was working on, and it walks in. It's, uh, the robot explains, humanity is now gone. There are no more humans. They were the last. And then the robots are confused. They don't know what to do now, because they were always designed to serve humanity, and they realize that they were wrong the whole time. And now they feel they have no purpose. But this new robot, whose name is David, explains, no, because I am programmed with all the knowledge and all the feelings and all the sensory of all human beings ever. Essentially, this robot is human. And so they ask him, what do we do now? And he says, we are the humans now. And uh, David carries the body of the captain to an airlock and lets it float away as he explains to them that he will help them and that together they can be human and they will be the living monument to the species that came before them, the ones that created them. So that when other species come and discover them, the legacy of humanity will live on in this living museum that is the robots. Then it will end with uh, screens of photos, sepia tone photos of robots with uh, farmers garb on harvesting wheat and, you know, making textiles, doing things that were very human for many generations. And that's my space opera. Thanks for watching, ladies and gents. I hope you enjoyed this. If you want me to tell you more of my ideas for storytelling, post about it in the comments below. If you'd like me to come up with stories about other things or to write some short stories based on some ideas that you guys have, let me know and I'll share those with you in future videos. See ya.